Hey everyone, it's Mike, and guess where I am? I've ended up in Hollywood this time. I've been working on some fantastic stuff over here at the Adobe Max conference in LA, and I've learned some really wicked sticks, new techniques from Russell Brown, Mr. Photoshop himself. We're gonna do some green screening techniques just like they do here in Hollywood. I really hope you enjoy this tip, and wow, this is a whole lot of fun over here, so. Hope you enjoy this one, guys. Get into it. We're gonna be hanging around here for a bit. There's some fun stuff. I'm thinking of buying a house up there. What do you think? Yes! Okay, what a glamorous introduction. Now what we're looking at here is uh, a photograph taken during the uh, Russell Brown at Max conference. We had a wonderful green screen set up and we had this even more fantastic samurai warrior to photograph in this wonderful outfit. And we're going to extract our samurai warrior off the green screen. Photographs were taken by Rob Outwater, a fantastic uh, photographer who set up all of the green screen, all the lighting, backlighting for us and did a terrific job. So here's what we do. This is an NEF uh, file, a Nikon camera raw file taken with the Nikon uh, D2X, as you can see uh, down the bottom of the image here. So that's all very good. Um, <clears throat> we also um, wanted to make sure that what we do here is going to be as completely editable as possible. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and click on this bottom section here, this little hot spot, and that enables us to change one option, which is open in Photoshop as a smart object. So that's going to embed the camera raw file right inside the Photoshop document that we're working on as a default. Um, and then the open um, image or open image button turns to open object and then that will embed it as a smart object. That means we can come back in any stage. It also means that we can do whatever we like with these sliders now because it's going to make it um, editable. So I'm going to turn up the vibrance and the contrast because we can come back and change that later on. This is going to make it a lot easy, easier for us to key this out and the clarity because we've got a lot of contrast between the foreground and the background. The other thing that we can do is crop off any unwanted regions. So we can crop right in here on our Samurai Warrior. We don't need to worry about any of the stuff in the background so we can get right in on it and press the open object button. That's step one. So that's opening up. We're going to take advantage of a couple of new things. First of all, the masks panel is exactly where we're gonna go. So we can notice a few things. The layers panel has opened up as a smart object. That's what this little icon here is. And the other thing is, we have the masks panel here. So let's drag that out. We're going to use this a little bit and we're going to also bring the layers out as well so we can keep uh, tabs on what's going on with the layers. So when we want to add a mask in, all we do, I'll zoom in so you can have a good look, is we add a pixel mask. Just go right ahead and click that and then that will add a pixel mask and when you look at your layers, there it is right there. Okay. Now we're going to take advantage of the color range. So if I click on the color range tab here, we can then start to use this to pick all the green out. We can select the selection preview, we can have in grayscale, uh, and we can view the little image on here. So we can get a good look at what the mask is going to be like while we see the green over here. <clears throat> now, we can then go ahead and click on the background and then that enables us to choose the colors, okay? Now when we want to add to this, we can use the little add to sample eyedropper over here. So we can do that. Or you can simply go ahead and hold the shift key down and that does the same thing. So then we can click in and add extra bits of green in till we get a fantastic looking mask. And we can just keep clicking and we're able to add little bits of mask in until we get it looking just right. Now, when we've selected as much as possible, we can have a look around, it's looking very good. We can then use the fuzziness slider to then just take away any extra little bits. And we don't wanna to go too far because you, you start to see some of the 
the warrior coming out there. So we'll bring that back. And we've done, I think, a pretty good job. And we'll just add a couple of extra little clicks in here. We've done a pretty good job of masking that out. Very good. We go ahead and press OK. Uh, and then we need to invert that, of course, because we, we've got back the front. There we've masked out our Samurai Warrior. Now, just a couple of extra tips. You could see we had a little bit of tape on the floor, so we want to get rid of that. All we need to do is making sure that the mask is selected. Select a paintbrush here, making sure we have black as our foreground color. Then we can go ahead and drag and just draw right over the top of that to hide that out. And we can just touch that up. I'm just using my Wacom pen and tablet to fix that up. And we've got a pretty good looking mask. And then we can view that against a solid color background. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the um, adjustment layers here. This is the easiest way to create a solid color background layer. Choose a color. Let's choose something uh, kind of bluish, I think. Looks good. Press OK. And then put that in the background. So that all looks very good. Now this is one last little tip that uh, Russell uh, showed us all during the conference. And it's a fantastic tip to remove any little green haloing. So we have picked up a little bit of green from the background. Okay. Overall, a very good mask. Here's what you do. Use an adjustment uh, layer here. And we're going to use hue saturation. Now that automatically puts an adjustment layer on. And then we select the on image editing button here, which is this little on image editing button. We're going to change the saturation of whatever we click on. So all you need to do is select that, come over here to the green and just drag that to the left. And you'll notice the saturation of that comes back and we're just removing the green away from that edge. And we now have an absolutely spectacular key or cutout or mask of our Samurai Warrior. Um, hopefully you really enjoyed that tip. Thanks to Mr. Uh, Russell Brown for, sh for showing us uh, that one. Absolutely wonderful conference. If you ever get the chance to attend one of Russell Brown's seminars, you should definitely get along to it. That's where I've learned all my tips. Thank you for tuning in again to Creative Suite TV. We'll see you again real soon.